بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين اللهم اجعلنا من أهل القرآن الذين هم أهل الله وخاصته اللهم ألبسنا به الحلل وأسكننا به الضلل وادفع عنا به النقم واجعلنا به عند النعماء من الشاكرين وعند البلاء من الصابرين يا الله make us from the companions of the Quran make us from those who read the Quran during the day and during the night make us from those who connect with the Quran during their life and after they depart from this world make the Quran our companion in the, our graves make the Quran our leader to the Jannah and our shield from the fire Amin Ya Allah Amin okay um, today uh, we're doing things a little bit the opposite way I shared uh, during the week I shared a reflection uh, on the Quran Reflect website and uh, normally I do the video and then summarize the video in the in a short post and I post it on Quran Reflect. Now we're doing things the other way around. So now we had a reflection during the week about an ayah from Surah uh, Al Imran. So we already shared the reflection and now inshallah we are going to read the reflection and my intention, my hope that all of us will go to the link on Quran Reflect and comment on the website itself. I'll be sharing the link again in the chat here. Uh, so let's, uh, I'll be, let, let me share my screen. This ayah is from Surat again, from Surat Al Imran. Uh, okay, as you guys can see, we are in the Quran Reflect website and that you should see have a similar view in the app basically if you if you go to the quran reflect website we have different themes or different hashtags one of them is like reflecting crisis one of them is our session here quran weekly dose and uh, of course sheikh walid vasiun is allah khair he just posted a maybe him or one of his students just posted a reflection is allah khair uh okay okay so we're going to reflecting in crisis where most of the users of the platform are reflecting on ayat from the Quran that help us cope with the current events in Gaza. So, of course, these are sorted by the most popular. Sheikh Ahmad Fahim started this beautiful series of reflections, but you can go always to latest. And latest will basically uh, sort them by the most recent uh, reflection. And I would like to take you to my reflection that we had here. Basically, where we're asking people, we are soliciting reflections on this profound Quranic, Quranic healing method. So here is the, I'm continuing reading. So this is the post. Again, I am, let me share the post again. And I really want us to kind of uh, uh, share our reflections immediately on the website. I just want to increase the engagement in the website. So here is the ayah. Let me read the ayah. I'll read the ayah, we'll read the translation, we'll discuss the background. If anyone has read this post before, please just thumbs up so that I know maybe if everyone read it, so I don't have to reread it again or share some uh, reflections. Can you show a thumbs up if you read the post uh, uh, before? Amna, barakallahu fikum, thank you. We had other folks who read it. If not, don't feel bad, Adi, we're going to read it together, inshallah. <laughs> okay, uh, bismillah. So I really want us to start from the ayah first and then the background. I know you can you can always go the other way the other way around. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. Idh tus'iduna wa la talluna ala ahadin wa rasoolu yad'aukum fi ukhraakum ta'atabakum ghammam bi ghammin likay la tahzanu ala ma fatakum wa la ma asabakum. Wallahu khabirun bima ta'maloon Okay, anyone wants to read the English for us? I can read it. <clears throat> Bismillah. Go. Remember when you were running far away in panic, not looking at anyone? while the messenger, peace be upon him, was calling to you from behind. So Allah rewarded your disobedience with distress upon distress. 
Now do not grieve over the victory you were denied or the injury you suffered. And Allah is aware of what you do. Okay, barakallahu feekum, jazakallahu khair, Amna. Uh, so this is 153. Let me try to find other commentaries. 3, 153. Okay, so. You guys you see by now that it's hard to translate or to rely on one translation. Okay, let's see what. Okay, so let's see what how, how Dr. Father Suleiman translated it. Recall climbing and not looking back for anyone. With the Messenger of Allah Sallam calling you from, from the rear. And he repaid you with sorrow on account of the sorrow. You caused the Prophet so that you would not grieve over what you have still missed or what you have befell you. And Allah is aware of everything that you do. Okay, so here's the background. The background is a battle of Uhud, the Muslim community. They were defeating the enemies. In the beginning, the Muslims were defeating. They kind of... Uh, they were able to uh, push back the Quraysh army and the Muslims were strong, they were winning. Uh, the archers who were on the small hill, uh, they were supposed to protect the back of the Muslims and they, they saw that the battle is over, they assumed the battle is over, so they left their position, they disobeyed the Messenger وسلم, and they went, they rushed to the battlefield to collect spoils of war. And of course, there was a clear violation to the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, and his command who said that even if you see us, whether you see us winning or losing, and even if you see us dead and the birds are eating from our corpses, you never leave your position, subhanAllah. You never leave the position, the spot that the Messenger وسلم, assigned you uh, to do. Uh, and of course, the Sahaba, the, the archers, there were 50, there were 50 of them. And more, most, most of them, like 40 out of the 50, left their positions and they rushed to the battlefield. And uh, subhanAllah, their leader stayed on the hill. Uh, but of course, there were not enough of them. So Khalid bin Walid saw that. Khalid bin Walid was on the side of the Quraysh, on the Kuffar. So Khalid turned his, uh, took his, uh, you know, uh, knights, like uh, with, you know, soldiers on horses. So they were fast, they were strong, they were smart. And they went behind the hill, they climbed on the hill, and they killed the archers, and then and they sent the signal to the Quraysh army, which was retreating, which was defeated. Hey, you guys, we you came to them from the back, so you guys uh, attacked them from the front. So the Muslims were surrounded, and subhanAllah, that was a very heavy defeat uh, for the Muslim community. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about uh, this, uh, this incident, so uh, that 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 what makes this uh, this ayat very important to reflect on at times when the Muslims are being, I wouldn't say maybe defeated, maybe bombarded with losses, maybe overwhelmed with the, with the, with agonies, with distress. Uh, so Allah said, "Tusaduna wa la ala ahadin." Remember when you were in chaos and you were not basically. Uh, not looking at anyone. The Messenger وسلم, is calling you. And imagine even the Prophet وسلم, was calling them and they were not listening. This is how 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 sad, how difficult the situation was. But then the interesting part, Allah says, فَأَثَابَكُمْ غَمَّنْ بِغَمٍ So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rewarded you, which could mean reward in a consequence, consequential, like Allah paid you back, Allah caused you to live in a distress after distress. Or it could be that Allah rewarded you positively. Allah helped you with a distress after distress. And this is the ayah that, man, this needs a lot of reflection. How Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rewards literally with distress. How Allah sends a distress after distress. And each one of them will be almost canceling each other. Each one of them will be healing. Sometimes Allah may send a difficulty and that difficulty may have a healing element. So these are the distresses that 
I quoted and just translated from Sheikh Abdul Rahman Saadi. He rewarded you due to your deeds with distress after distress. The first blow was when the victory was in front of their own eyes, but then it was gone. So that was the first distress, the first gum, that hey, it was right in front of them. They were about to pick the spots of war and then they were, they were gone. The second one was when the promise with the financial aids that was gone, and then when they were heavily defeated, either physically injured or martyred. But then a distress, some scholars mentioned that this was the biggest distress that Allah has rewarded the Sahaba with, which is the rumor that the Messenger وسلم, was killed, was murdered. So, yes, they were defeated, but when the musibah that Rasulullah or the assumption that the Prophet was murdered, was killed, this made the Sahaba go in complete chaos. Some Sahaba left the battlefield. They were like, why should we fight if the Messenger وسلم, died? And this is, but other Sahaba like Anas bin Nadr, عنه, who heard the rumor and he said, if the Messenger وسلم, died, let me go and die on the same way, on the same cause, in the same battle that he was killed. SubhanAllah. So that rumor made him sacrifice more and more. Uh, SubhanAllah. And he earned the status of a shaheed while fighting for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and while making sure that he is connected to Allah, not even to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Some sahaba like uh, Mus'ab bin Umair, when he heard the uh, that the Messenger of Allah died, he, he kept saying, وَمَا مُحَمَّدٌ إِلَّا رَسُولٌ قَدْ خَلَتْ مِنْ قَبْلِهِ الرُّسُلِ Muhammad Sallallahu is only a messenger and many messengers came before him. He's not the only, you know, he's just, a, he, he's saying that he's just a man. We don't worship him, but although we love him so much. So that statement from that Sahabi became part of the ayah. وَمَا مُحَمَّدٌ إِلَّا رَسُولٌ قَدْ خَلَتْ مِنْ قَبْلِهِ الرُّسُلِ So it was a very tough moment in the Sahaba. But really, if we go back to the ayah, فَأَثَابَكُمْ غَمَّنْ بِغَمٍ Allah rewarded you with distress after distress. Where is the reward here? The reward, simply speaking, is that the reward is as simple as when there is a rumor with a big calamity, and that rumor will overtake your emotions and it will overwhelm you. But then you realize that this moment, rumor is not correct. So then the Sahaba realized Rasulullah Rasulullah is alive. Yes, he was injured. Yes, he was bleeding, but he's still alive. This experience made them forget all other distress, all other difficulties. So again, sometimes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends us a distress after distress, and they kind of cancel each other out, especially when you realize that one of them is not a big deal. And subhanAllah, this has this healing element, and this has this profound effect where you try to compare the musibah to another musibah. And this reminds us to with the famous statement that Umar bin Khattab, radiallahu anhu arda, uh, used to say always, ma asabatni musibah illa wa hamadtullah ala arba. Whenever a calamity afflicts me, I thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for four things. And here's a call for some uh, participation from you guys. What are the four uh, things, what are the four blessings that Umar bin Khattab thinks about or remembers whenever there is a musibah. What do you guys think? Bismillah. Let me start a whiteboard here. Yala, you, got, you guys can either uh, uh, use the chat or uh, that brings you closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by asking for shifa. Okay, that is a correct answer. So, but there is a specific way, uh, um, actually, yeah, yeah that, that was one of them. That was number three, I think. Wallahu alam. Bismillah. What are other, uh, what are other blessings that it is not in my deen? Beautiful. Annaha lam takun fi deeni. That's number one. That it's not in my deen. So I thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that this musibah that afflicted me did not take away my deen. Again, Umar bin Khattab is teaching us the priorities. Yes, I may be affected in my job, in my family, in my losing a loved one, losing my house, losing a car. But what are the priorities? My deen comes first. As long as this calamity did not affect my deen, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. So that's the first one. Annaha lam takun fi deeni. What is the second? Uh... 
Okay. Could have been worse. Okay. Beautiful. أنها لم تكن أكبر منها. Right? أنها لم تكن أكبر. أنها it could have been much worse than that. So Umar would thank Allah for four things: that it's not in my deen, that it is not bigger than that. Number three, uh, Umar says that أني صبرت عليها. I thank Allah subhanahu wa taala that I was patient on this musibah. That I displayed a lot of patience. That I displayed, alhamdulillah, that I did not reject the faith or I did not kind of abandon the faith because of this. So that's number three. Uh, allows me to explain the sabr. Yeah, and you sabr exactly. Muhammad, barakallahu feek, jazakallahu khair. And number four, and you sabr alayha. That I remind myself that I will be rewarded with it. Another Sahabi, and I can't recall the full narration, that he always compares, oh, it's an expiation to my sins, yeah, that it, it, it will be a reward or an expiation to my sin. Barakallahu feekum khadi. So the, the other narration mentions that a Sahabi would say, I compare my musibah to my biggest musibah, which is losing the Prophet. So, I compare this calamity. With, with, this, with the biggest calamity that believers had, which is losing the Messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And of course, nothing will, will, will equate to that. So that was a way of coping and dealing with challenges in our lives. Why am I sharing this specific ayah? So in the past week, uh, we had a funeral. We had a death in my family. My father-in-law, uh, the father of my wife, Dr. Ali Ghazawi, passed away, SubhanAllah. Um, on Monday, so and يعني, Subhanallah, it's a it's a shock for me, for my kids, for my wife. Uh, we went there, and Tuesday was the funeral. And Subhanallah, many ideas were happening uh, during, during, before, and after the uh, the funeral. Uh, the first is uh, compare our calamity with the calamity of people of Gaza. Compare that we were able to hold a funeral for him. We were able to have a proper washing. Uh, we had so many people show up. Like I think some of one of my in-laws counted maybe four thousand people total who uh, sent their condolences, who sent a message, who attended the funeral or the aza uh, the, uh, um, later. So Alhamdulillah, it's kind of, it was a, almost a big event because he, mashallah, he was a very known person, a very charitable person. And we always thought about the people of Gaza, how many of them are not even getting the chance for a proper burial. And uh, again, and I think it's the same mindset of فَأَثَابَكُمْ غَمَّنْ بِغَمِّنْ When there's a calamity and there's another calamity that shows and they almost collide and you try to make sense, we assume that a calamity on top of a calamity will be a linear addition. You know, one of them will have 100 units of sadness. Another one will have 1,000 units of sadness. So it will become 1,000 and 100, you know, 1,100. That's not how it works, subhanAllah. Sometimes the two sadnesses or the two calamities or the multiple calamities in our lives, they put things into perspective and the result is always better. The result is always uh, stronger, conviction, more connection to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as you guys said, reminding ourselves that we, uh, this life is temporary, reminding ourselves that uh, you are not the first or the last person to lose a loved one. So be quiet and thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because it could have been worse. And uh, yeah, I mean, Jazakumullah khair, may Allah accept him. Jazakumullah khair for your dua. Barakallahu feekum. So, uh, again, I, I want us now to open the floor for reflections of فَأَثَابَكُمْ غَمَّنْ بِغَمِّنْ Allah has rewarded you with a distress after distress. How does that uh, play, how, how does that ayah apply to your life? How does that ayah apply to your personal tragedies and struggles in life? And once we reflect on our lives, what I want us to do is to go to that post that I shared and start reflecting. So Alhamdulillah, I shared this 
I shared the background here in the main uh, in the main uh, post about the commentary about from Sheikh Saadi, and I basically prompted people to ask for to enter to add reflections, uh, and then I added the personal story from my father-in-law this week. But Alhamdulillah, I had multiple uh, reflections, multiple. Uh, People putting, mashallah, uh, a lot of great content. And I want you guys to add. So we have uh, 14, 13 people in this group. I want us all to reflect, to ask, to answer the question, how does this ayah apply to our lives? How does this ayah apply to our own uh, struggles? And when they compete each other, do we feel that the sadness it's adding on top of each other? Or is it displacing other sadnesses? What do you guys think? How do you think this ayah applies to you? So if anyone wants to reflect, to share, uh, to unmute and share some thoughts, I would love to hear from you. Bismillah. Okay. Um, any comments? You guys feel free to unmute yourself, or to uh, you can type things in the chat. Yeah, I'm Bismillah. Bismillah. Uh, yeah, I guess I will share, um, and I'll be brief about it. But this uh, kind of remind. It didn't. Uh, I didn't think about it when I initially read this a couple of days ago. But now that you've explained the background story, and sort of your a bit of your reflection and put it more into context, it's making me recall things um, also from my past. But yeah, personally, I've had um, experienced like one injury after the other and one caused the other to worsen. And they were not both very good experiences. They were kind of scary. Um, but it did make me wonder like what's what's going on? Why did this happen? Um, but I would also say that um, it has brought me closer to Allah. Um, and, you know, asking questions, reflecting on it, praying, um, you know, asking uh, for healing, um, so that, now that when I look at it and I look at the ayah, the way you've described it, and I look at my own experience, initially when I thought about it, I was like, um, you know, does um, am I being punished? Is this is this my punishment for something that I've done wrong? Um, have mm -hmm. I not been a good Muslim? Have I missed out on things I should have done? And that was the mindset for a very long time, and it took me down into a rabbit hole, and then I had to come out of it, and um, and sort of like. I guess, slowly rehabilitate and get back into some level of um, functionality in life. And now I'm able to dip into um, specific religious scriptures being part of this halakha, and I'm gaining more knowledge. And I feel like I would relate to the four points that were just mentioned about it wasn't my deen. In fact, it strengthened my deen. Um Allah. It could have been worse. My life could have been taken. I could have been absolutely gone, but I wasn't. I'm still here. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it probably is an expiation of my sins because I feel like perhaps that has also humbled me in some ways. And there's still more humility to work on um, moving forward in the future. Um, and so I, I can I can relate to that. I can look at it this way. SubhanAllah. Thanks for the sharing that your reflection. And one thing that's very important in what you described, the fact that, look, like, uh, you know, normally we attribute uh, calamities to punishments. That, yeah, I had, I was injured, I was afflicted, I lost my job, it's a punishment. But many times the, the, the decision, whether it's a punishment or not, actually uh, we don't know for sure if Allah is punishing you we don't know for sure if Allah 
if 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 if, uh, if Allah is depriving you from something, what we know is what we can control is our reaction after the calamity, our reaction after the uh, incident. And one of the scholars mentions that you know it's it's an interesting uh, um, um, rule. Like like if you want to know whether a certain calamity is a reward. Is, sorry, is an, an expiation and elevation of the ranks, or is it a punishment? Look at your reaction after it. Like someone might say, people of Gaza right now, they are their homes are being destroyed. Does that mean that Allah is punishing them? Well, one way to know if Allah is punishing a person or not is look at their reaction after the calamity. If they are thanking Allah, if they are closer to Allah, then this means it's an opportunity for expiation of the sins and elevation of their ranks. Whereas if somebody got afflicted with a calamity and this made them more rebellious, made them more uh, challenging to Allah, made them further from Allah, then that's probably a punishment because, يعني, uh, subhanAllah, uh, the answer is no, no, normally is in your hands. You, 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 you yourself could, could realize the answer for what's happening in your life. Uh, Actually, Hani is sharing an interesting comment. Maybe it's not important to know why, but I guess we need to believe that it is for our best no matter what. And this is something not very easy to reach at. 100%. Barakallah fikum, Hani. That's a very engineer, engineering-oriented mindset of things. Stop trying to uh, as, or overanalyze the situation, whether it's a punishment or a reward, right? Uh, just uh, focus on what you what you need to do, which is to get closer to Allah. Uh, uh, actually, and there's an ayah. Um, I'm pulling the ayah right now. I really want us to. I really want us to to, to uh, like the the, the 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 mindset, like like the story in Surah Kahf. Yeah, Zakum khair. And Allah's plan is the best plan by Hafsa. And Rasha is like sometimes the patience is the key, 100%. So uh, the, the idea is that uh, stop. And the, 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 what I liked about Hania's comment was stop trying to overanalyze why did something happen and focus what's in your hand, which is hey, focus that, what you are doing, and focus that it is for you. Like Allah has, is, is doing this for you. And that's the ayah. Uh, I think I wrote a blog post on this also. Say nothing will befall us except what Allah has destined for us. And that's here, here the comment is it. That my favorite word is lana. No calamity will hit us except what Allah has written for us. Allah did not say against us. لم يقل علينا بل قال لنا uh, so again, let's fix our perspective on calamities happening. When more calamities happen and take place, always think about how Allah is healing you with some of these calamities, and always reflect on what could, what's the worst that it could have been worse. It could have been worse. It could have been worse. It could have been afflicting your deen. It could have been more bigger than that. Remember that our biggest calamity as Muslims is the absence of Rasulullah sallallahu in our lives and uh, as long as we are patient on it and we will be and we know that we are rewarded for it hey guess what it's everything in, the, in life is happening for you not against you the language here I know some of us might say this is only semantics and it doesn't matter it does matter Wallahi uh, since I started doing coaching uh, I'm realizing that the language that we use internally or externally speaks volumes about our internal affairs so it's very important to watch our language and correct our language subhanallah yeah the power of arabic about cannot happen for us and they don't happen to us barakallahu feekum fatan and hania subhanallah okay so please try your best to reflect on a point or an incident where we had multiple calamities on top of each other and how they turned out to be some of them were healing you were helping you subhanallah 
to think positively about it helps us not fall into a depressive state 100 percent subhanallah and depression is when when somebody again this is a very non-click non-clinical uh, definition it's when we assume the worst it's when we when we stop hoping when we stop living with hope that tomorrow will be better than today and that's a very terrible situation to be in subhanallah may allah help everyone who is going through these uh, emotions and help get them out of it uh, subhanallah uh, Aisha is asking what if you have reacted badly to a calamity how can you fix that realizing you're wrong and having more knowledge now okay then simply asking allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to repent first and foremost and then trying to really rewire your brain and tell yeah, like trying to educate yourself about what happened it's very important it's not uh, I don't want us to think that if somebody reacted badly to a calamity one time, خلاص, it's over, they, they are done, they are doomed. I, this is not meant to be the case at all. If somebody was ignorant or if somebody was weak or if somebody did not behave, even if they had knowledge, but they kind of, they felt their performance during the calamity was not the best, then hey, pick, pick yourself up and try bigger, try harder. Uh, that experience of falling in your iman but then picking yourself up again is by itself and a sign that you are stopping this downward spiral of emotions subhanallah so this is not meant to be like oh it's over right however and i have to mention this aisha um prophet muhammad sallallahu one time he saw this woman that woman she was burying her child and he saw she was crying and she was like very emotional and he went to her and told her to, to calm down to be patient to expect the reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so she told him just get out of my face you don't know what happened to me so she was very emotional she did not even realize his Rasulullah sallallahu but then later on, she calmed down she realized that hey she should not have said that and she went to him and kind of apologized and she was starting to get more on the spiritual path and the Prophet ﷺ said clearly, الْأُولَى, that the true definition of patience is how we react when we get afflicted on the first time, right? Meaning that for that specific incident, that woman lost the chance to be rewarded like the true sense of patience because she did not react well. Now, but does that mean that it's over for her? No, she's still breathing. She's still alive. She can still learn and move on and be connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala more and more. So, uh, uh, so, so of course, as long as يعني, subhanAllah, our life, we're always learning. We are work in progress. We will never reach a point where our tazkiyah is perfect, where our tazkiyah is, خلاص, يعني, we're done. There is no... Uh, in Islam, we should not assume that we will reach the state of full tazkiyah. It's a lifelong process, and that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told His Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and worship your Lord until the certainty of death comes to you. So we are always struggling, always trying to do tazkiyah for us, subhanAllah. Sometimes Khali is sharing, sometimes it's a good practice to put the calamity into perspective by comparing it to all the positive things in our lives and be grateful for, for, and for Allah's ni'mah, 100%. And that's why, subhanAllah, all of these journaling uh, activities and exercises, and I, think, I, think I may have shared with you the Barakah journal, which is a beautiful journal that we encourage using in the Productive Muslim Company. It's a beautiful journal that teaches us to always start planning our day, our week, pla uh, reflecting on the past, we always start with the blessings, with the gratefulness, start with what we have. Wallahi, it's great many times, especially productive Muslims, especially Muslims who are serious students of knowledge, sometimes we assume that nothing good happened to us this week. We always have this pessimistic view that, hey, I should have done more. And that's why يعني, I like Khadi's comment here, always start with gratitude, always start with the positive things that happened. Uh, subhanallah again the calamities we have to put it in perspective it's a lifelong journey it's not a one-time shot uh, sometimes we fail sometimes we we, we we get it right 
let's try our best to always improve and in case we miss guess what as long as you keep striving uh you know trying to refine your character your iman your faith that's how allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to be he wants us to be in a state of continuous improvement subhanallah until the last moment in our life barakallahu feekum wa jazakumullah khair i ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us always consistently striving for his sake i ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help all of us uh, put our lives, our challenges, our blessings, and our calamities in perspective. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help our families, our Muslim brothers and sisters, and fathers and mothers, and grandfathers and grandmothers, and children in Gaza. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help empower them, strengthen their faith. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to support them. We, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we ask Allah to strengthen their iman, their patience. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to feed them actual food and spiritual food and, and we ask Allah to, to send them angels who will be protecting them and will be empowering them and will be enforcing them so they defeat their enemy and our enemy and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to let this calamity of Gaza now be an opportunity for us to wake up and do something for this ummah inshallah so that we do our part and uh, yes the people who are having patience are the people of Gaza they we need our dua more than them technically they are alive and we are the one that we need to really uh, sacrifice and do something for our sake for, for allah's sake for the ummah barakallahu feekum wa jazakumullahu khayran inshallah ta'ala i would love please feel free i'm gonna post the uh the link again and please take some time to reflect anything that you have learned today and reflect on the uh, group uh, sorry in the link on the quran reflect جزاكم الله خير السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته